Then bless the Lord. Oh my soul, and all that is within us, let us pray the name that is magnified and glorified the God from on high. Good evening. Let us praise the Lord. Let us magnify and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly we bless his name. I'm Elder Greg Smith, and we come to glorify God on this evening. We come to celebrate 27 years. Hallelujah. 27 years of pastorialship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now you're happy. Uh, well, we ask you just to join in on us as we praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, our praise leader is coming. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many got the victory on today? Come on, put your hands together. Special blessing over him. 
because it's special when you when they come to feed the sheep. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Anytime they get up to feed the sheep, they need special prayer. Hallelujah. To be a pastor, you need special prayer. You need those holding up his arms, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So we say special prayer over Thank him on this evening, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Good evening, saints. Our scripture reading will be coming from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And there will be three variances. The first will come from the King James Version. The second will be from the Good News Bible. And the third will be from the Amplified Version. And it reads, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Good News Bible reads, But continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the Amplified Version reads, But grow spiritually mature yeah. in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. To him be glory, honor, majesty, splendor, yes. both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. I have read to you 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 18. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all the doers of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Okay, this is a celebration. We look tired. What's wrong? We ain't good today? Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. First, giving honor to God, who is definitely the maker, the creator, the sustainer of my life. Amen. Giving honor to my pastor, Pastor Bush. Amen. Amen. Pastor, um, my sister in Ohio calls me Pastor G. We want to thank you for serving a faithful God faithfully for 27 years. Amen. I give honor to our visiting pastor, Pastor Hellier, on this evening. We are so glad that God's power anointing, I'm sorry, God's power unlimited could join us today Amen. on this special occasion where we can show our bishop, yeah. our pastor, our friend, how much we love and appreciate him. That's right. We certainly hope that something will be said or done to help you welcome the presence and the anointing of God in this place. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 150 to praise the Lord. Praise God in his temple. Praise his strength in heaven. Praise him for the mighty things he has done. Praise his supreme greatness. Praise him with trumpets. Praise him with harps and lyres. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with harps and flutes. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise the Lord, all living creatures. You are welcome to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm here to give you your announcements. Man, we've already had a wonderful welcome, so I know you feel welcome by now. Amen. Our announcements include, our uh, due to the pandemic, we are not having regular worship services at this time, but we are having live streaming services on Sundays and Wednesdays. Our upcoming events include Next Sunday, we will climax our anniversary with Superintendent Pastor Lester Bush and Dupree Memorial Church of God in Christ. And again, we thank, thank Pastor Eli for this afternoon service, amen, in his congregation. We will be having our communion and family prayer next Sunday, the first Sunday, instead of the second Sunday, due to it being Mother's Day. 
So we will have our communion and family prayer on next Sunday, May 2nd. Our sick and recovery include Reverend Philip Johnson, who had surgery, he is in recovery, and our own sister, Colina Gonzalez. If you would like to make a contribution to our church, you may do so by using Cash App, which is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. That's capital A, capital L, and capital C. Or you may use the mobile Giplify under Abundant Love Church. If you would like to mail your contribution to the church, we are at P.O. Box 6577, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46896. And if you're in our area and you would like to drop it off, our address is 2615 New Haven Avenue, Amen. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Amen. And at this time, we're going to call for our praise team. Let's give it up for the praise team. For the, let's continue to praise the Lord. Amen.
time we're going to have reflections. Amen. By Dr. Edney Dupree and Minister Chris Halfacre. No, I'm sorry. Sister Edney Dupree and then Evangelist Vera Drew. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for being here um, so I can speak about my pastor. Um, I was planning on preparing something, but that never works. And everything that I have to say is just from my heart anyway. So I appreciate him being the pastor that you could call on any time. And sometimes it can be for the pettiest of things, really. And he will still give you an answer and mean it too. So. Um, I appreciate him. I appreciate him for being there for my children, for me. Um, through everything I've been through, especially last year, it was a rough one, but I mean, nobody could tell what I had been through, and that was just for the blessings of God. Amen. And um, I appreciate him for putting up with me, because sometimes I have bad attitudes, and he know it, yep. like in rehearsals and stuff, so. I appreciate, I appreciate that, but like the one thing you don't want to see is if you mess up and he has to yell at you, and it's not nice. I mean, it'll stick with you for years. Like one song I, that sticks with me every time I play, that song, I just see him, get it right. He made me stop in rehearsal until I got that song right. So um, just little things with him mean a lot. So music especially, get it right or don't do it at all. Amen. And that's just how he is. So I, don't, I appreciate him. Um, I appreciate for him being a father figure. I appreciate him being so much like my father. Um, at times when I miss him, all I have to do is look at Bishop because he's a lot of my dad every day. So I appreciate him for being my pastor and my friend. Thank you. Amen. Um, um, I was asked to do a special tribute, and I had to talk with the Lord because I didn't want to have. I said, "Okay, Lord, now I got to do something special. So you got to give me something special." So what the Lord gave me was Bishop Bush, our spiritual chocolate man. Amen. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> All right amen. We know that Pastor's first love is the Lord. But chocolate is next in line. So let's explore how this addiction can prove to him to be divine. Although chocolate gets a bad rap, it can actually be good for you. I will examine for you at least five of its benefits, since number five is the number of grace, too. Chocolate has been proven to be a brain booster. Its flavonoids infiltrate the areas of the brain involving learning and memory and it has just enough caffeine to enhance concentration uh, so that you can spend more time studying his word freely. Chocolate relieves stress and gives you that feel-good feeling by releasing serotonin and endorphins, which are the feel-good chemicals of the brain. And since the joy of the Lord is your strength, preaching the word of the Lord will never become a strain. Amen. Chocolate has proven to be good for your vision. Its flavonoids reduce age-related vascular degeneration. So, Pastor, you will be able to see well for a long time and, <laughs> and read God's word without any complication. Chocolate is also good for your heart. Lowering blood pressure, reducing inflammation, and warning, warding off heart disease and strokes. Since the Bible says to guard your hearts with all diligence, in doing so with long life, you will be plucked. <laughs> Lastly, chocolate helps lower your blood pressure. It has flavonoids that help open up blood vessels so blood can flow without obstruction. And since we know that life is in the blood, for you, godly living is a natural deduction. Of course, for those of you who are all excited about chocolate now, you have to ingest the right kind of chocolate to get its benefits. Dark chocolate with 50 to 90% cocoa flavonoids are the best. 
So we know that you will continue to deliver a rightly divided word, and we will be able to receive the word with some added zest. So don't, so you don't have to totally give up, chocolate. Although God did deliver you from its addiction, just continue to eat it in moderation, and God will uphold you in your conviction. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm here to remind you of our regular stream times. <laughs> Although we are not having regular worship services, our live streams are open for limited attendance, but we will observe social distancing and face mask guidelines. Our live streams are as following, Sundays at 9.30 for our Sunday school panel. Morning worship is at 11 a.m. On Wednesday nights, our Bibles our Disciples Academy Bible Study is at 6.30, and then you can find our Motivating Moments at 8 a.m. on Monday mornings. You can find us on Abundant Love Church at face, on Facebook, and you can find us on YouTube at capital A, capital L, lowercase ministries, and then you can find us on Instagram as well at Abundant.Love and Twitter at Abundant Love at ALMS Fort Wayne. Thank you. Amen. We're going to call up the praise team once again. Amen. Let us let them bless us in song. Amen. Amen. Pastor, he, I, he, I love these people that you brought with you. They're full of the spirit. You got to love them. I love them too. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
somebody say, excellent is his name. No, wait a minute. I'm trying to see if you know the same God I know. Say, excellent is his name. Excellent is thy name, O Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name. Your name is excellent in all the earth. Come on, clap your hands one more time. One more time. Glory to God. I know we're streaming. Amen. And I know, incidentally, we have knowledge that people have been viewing this telecast from over seven different states. Wow. So we have regulars uh, that tune in from Ohio and Pennsylvania, from Arizona and from California. Uh, we have people that tune in from Michigan. I mean, I can't go through all the states, but I want you to know something. Even if they didn't tune in, we're in the house that's called by his name. And the Bible says if we hold our peace, the rocks will cry out. And I don't know about you, but I don't need an interpreter for my praise. I don't need a rock crying out for me because the Lord has done too many good things for me. Amen. I know the pandemic is gone. I said earlier in the pandemic, I said, I don't believe I'll get it. I said, but if I get it, I know the God that's able to cure it. Amen. Amen. And then you have to be careful what you say sometimes. Yes, sir. Because in September, I contracted the virus. Amen. But I started talking to the Lord about what to do. And I want you to know something. I got confidence in science. I got confidence in medicine. But I have more confidence in the word of God. Amen. The Bible says, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman wakes up, but he wakes up in vain. And I know you got a mask, and I know you're social distancing, but unless the Lord keep your health. Right. Amen. Amen. Unless the Lord, and so the Lord is faithful. Amen. He healed me, didn't have a very serious case, and I've been on my feet running and still telling people that God is a healer. We're glad for that. Glad for 27 years. I, it is... It is such great joy, it's such a high honor and a privilege to be able to introduce this man because I know him intimately, I know him well, and that he worshiped with us for years. And he was not one of the people that gave me a lot of trouble. Amen. And you know, pastors can't say that about everybody Amen. that they pastor. All right, I'm gonna talk to that light right there. <laughs> The Bible says that you are to obey them that have rule over you because they have to give an account. And the Bible says that you want them to do that with joy and not with grief because if your pastor has to give an account of you with grief, the Bible says that that is unprofitable for you. And so you want to get the benefit uh, out of pastoral leadership. He served here well. He served here for years. Amen. And now that, it is, that he is in his pastorate, he still treats me like, like his family, still treats me like his father, still treats me like his friend. Amen. I have watched the progression of his ministry. And one of the things that you find out about ministry is that the people take on the spirit and the attitude yes. of their leader. Amen. He's not a dead, dry preacher. I, I better say that again. He's not a dead, dry preacher. He believes in the power of the Holy Ghost, and he believes in the Lord having his way. And so I'm going to ask every word carrier if you would stand to your feet with me at this time. Every time I say word carrier, uh, people think I'm talking about a preacher, but if you're a saint of God, you should be a word carrier. And you ought to hide that word in your heart amen, so that you can walk a life that is pleasing to the Lord. It is my high honor, my distinct privilege to present to some and introduce to others the proud pastor of God's power of unlimited church and ministries. Would you all receive Pastor Donald Hellmeyer with a hearty amen.
truly, what do you say after such an intro? Knowing that I got this from him. He taught me how to be humble and how to endure as a good soldier. Many times we want the glit and the glamour, but we don't want to struggle. There is no glamour and no glory without a struggle. So every now and then, we got to go through just to prove to God that we can stand Amen. in the midst of a bad situation. Yes, Understanding how COVID has touched so many lives, so many homes, but yet the church is still standing. Yes. Let all of the believers in the house just begin to clap your hands and give the Lord some praise all over this building. If you really love the Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, come on. I need some hand clappers in the house on today. I need you to really give God a praise. Has he been good to you? Has God done anything for you? Did he wake you up this morning? Did you walk in on your own accord? They will stop their nose. Hallelujah. I truly give an honor unto the Lord who is the head of our lives, head of the church. I'm the head of the ministries that we pastor. Yes, sir. Honoring a great man of God. I'm so humbled that Sister Kyra called me. We always laughing. As soon as I heard her voice, I just bust out laughing. And I knew she wanted something. And I knew that her husband was right next to her. <laughs> and he was laughing too. But you know when you have that type of camaraderie, would save folks. You understand what I'm saying? Well, you ain't got to talk dirty to get nobody to laugh. Come on, saints. You know, everybody is not talking dirty. Just a smile. But Bishop Bush, what a man. What a legacy. There are so many preachers in the city that came through abundant love. And you know what? He loved us. He loved us as his children. And when we became men, he loved us as godly men. And I'm humbled and honored to even grace this pulpit with such a man of God. Come on, give the Lord a hand, please, for this year. I love him. Truly love him. And you know, you know how people care about you. I was at home. I'm going to preach in a minute, y'all. And um, I got a text from Bishop. And I ain't going to tell it all, Bishop. <laughs> and when he sent me the text, it was, you know, very touching because uh, my birthday had came. And he wanted to know if I had a cash account or something. And, uh, you know, he thought enough of me to bless me yeah. in secret. And I ain't well. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all listening? <laughs> I mean, I ain't well. Can we say that? Give an honor to Abundant Love, the whole family, the musicians and singers and praise team. Love you guys. You all are my family. But I also got my own family, another family. God's Power Unlimited Evangelistic Ministries is in the house. Somebody make some noise. Come on, somebody make some noise. We can't 
came to show you how much we love you, Bishop. Yeah. And I'll let you know that whatever you need, yes, sir. we're just a phone call away. Yeah. Can we say amen? Yeah. Thanking God for all of you that have played a part thus far. I mean, you know, it's preaching time. Yeah. I pray I haven't forgot anybody. My wife, God bless her, she uh, had to pull 12 hours today. And uh, man don't work, he don't eat. And in her job, she's in that medical profession. And when they have her mandatory to stay over. But y'all, I'm praying that I get money enough to get her off that job or something. Y'all don't hear. I want my wife beside me. Can we say amen? amen. So y'all keep on praying. And the Lord's going. <laughs> oh my God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we honor you on today. We understand, God, that your word is already blessed. But we thank you that you said you sent your word and your word healed them. Father, we need a healing word to go forth in the house on today. Somebody came in with a bowed down head. Somebody came in with a broken heart. God, somebody came in worried about how the bills are going to be paid. But we serve a worthy God who said that he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you that every ear in this place, God, open it now to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is getting ready to say unto this body of believers. That we will not leave here the way we came. That there'll be a word, God, that challenges us to move from grace to grace and faith to faith. Father, in trying times like this, we need you more than we've ever needed you before. Now, God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength, my God, and my redeemer. And the house said, Amen. Amen, amen. Well, I was sent a scripture that um, I believe um, were, was the theme of the 27 years. And Second Peter, uh, I believe Bobby read it, uh, 3 and 18. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures in, in your hearing. Second Peter 3 and 18 says, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge, wait a minute, which means I can't grow in grace unless I get new knowledge. I have to have an outside source bring new information in for me to obtain more knowledge. It says uh, of the Lord, not just uh, crazy stuff, but when you dial it in and you're trying to get knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And it says, but to him, uh, look, look, watch this, it says, to him be glory, both now, Bishop, and forever. Yes, sir. Glory be to God, yes. now and forever. I'm going to tie into this scripture, Isaiah 9, Verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, For every battle of a warrior. Yeah. Is there any warriors in the house today? Yeah. Did anybody come in with some fight in you? Yeah. Tired of the devil beating up on you? Yeah. Sometimes you got to get ready to fight. Right. And even if you can't fight, you got to stand your ground. Yeah. Can we say amen? For every warrior of uh, every battle, it says, it's with confusion, confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. Mm. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Verse number six. But unto us, a child, mm, grace is born. 
But unto us a son, grace is given. Yeah. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm yeah, saying. Right Counselor. Yeah. Mm. And I think about grace. Yeah. And the mighty God. The everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. When I began to think about the word of God, I was looking at this thing and I said, well, Lord, what am I getting ready to preach? I said, God, you got to give me something. He said, simply preach amazing grace. Yeah. He said, just preach amazing grace. Yeah. He says, when you begin to talk about the word amazing, it means to call someone to be astonished, to look in astonishment because they're looking at a great wonder. Yeah. There are some people that's looking at some of you and wondering why did God choose you when you were a nobody, you were a crackhead and now go home like a star y'all, I can, I, can I really preach? Yeah. A liar, a pet pirate, huh? We all have sinned and come short of the Lord. We were something even if your name wasn't called in that. But he says here, watch this, it says in astonishment, uh, uh, a great wonder, or to surprise someone, amazement, amazement. It means to astonish them and to blindside them, yeah. which means quit telling everybody your business. You got to keep some stuff quiet until God finishes the work. Yeah. Because when he finishes it, he gonna get the glory. When you finish it, you trying to take his glory. So you got to allow God, oh y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Sometimes God blindsides people that's looking for you to fail, but they don't understand that you're standing under amazing grace. And when I got amazing grace, I got everything. Because there is no grace without God. But his grace is amazing. That he can take someone off the streets and put them in a pulpit and they preach under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And God begin to move. He says blindsided. He said, and then they'll look at you and be dumbfounded because of the stuff that's coming out of your mouth. Mm. Well, dumbfound them because they thought you were ignorant and unlearned. And then when they open their eyes, they'll be flabbergasted. Yeah. God will do something so noteworthy that it's jaw-dropping. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's, it's jolting and shocking and startling and stunning. It'll even stupefy them and surprise them because God can use somebody like you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ah, God is amazing in the things that he does. But when I looked at this word grace, it means unmerited favor. Watch this. With divine assistance given unto humans. Watch this. Grace is divine because God, he, he, he planned grace before the foundations of the world because sin came by one man, but deliverance came by one man as well. Yeah. So you got to understand that God always had a contingency plan. He always give you a way out. Can we say amen? It means, watch this, not only given to humans, but for their regeneration. See, sometimes we got to be recharged. Every now and then we get low. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Every now and then we get weak and warm. Can we say? But God will regenerate you. And it's already, it's for the sanctification. Yes, sir. His grace comes to sanctify you, to pull you out of where you are, set you aside for the master's use. Sanctification. Watch this. It says, and he adds to you virtue that's coming only from God. Yes, sir. People will look at you and have to give God the glory because they understand and remember where you come from. And they'll say things like this. Only God can do that. And if God can do it for them, yes. he can do it for me. Yes. See, we got some for me folks in here. 
that God did some stuff for. Oh, watch this. He says, not only for the sanctification, but he says, for the enjoyment of divine assistance to have approval and favor. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Baby, when you got grace, you got favor. Yeah. When God grace you, he puts favor on you. And favor ain't fair. They wonder why you went from the back of the line to the front. It's because, baby, I got favor. God favored me. God looked down upon my situation. He said, I know that if I save him and if I deliver her, that they're going to give me the glory, all the honor, all the praise. They're not going to hold back anything from me. Why? Because I share my grace with them. And when you understand what grace really is, the dispensation, the dispensation this, of grace is upon us now. It's depositing into us instant kindness, courteousness, and clemency. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that we were guilty, Bishop. Yeah. But grace comes to our rescue. In the midst of sensing us to death, grace stepped in. Yeah. Ah, by the name of Jesus Christ, grace stepped in. And what it did was it delivered us from all of our sin. But when I begin to think about amazing grace, I begin to think about the song. Uh, do y'all remember the song, the songwriter? Uh, uh, the man by the name of Newton, that he was a slave owner. He, he rode the boats with slaves. And one night they were in a storm. And the storm, he thought it was going to kill them and destroy them. And he goes into his cabinet. He begins to pray and he begins to write the song. He says, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Mm. When I think about that amazing grace, the sound I hear is the hammer ringing on the cross. Yeah. When I think about grace, I hear them nailing Jesus to the cross. When I think about grace, I think about Pilate's whipping pole where they had a cat of nine tails. And when I think about grace, I think about the Stephanus, the crown of thorns that they put on it. When I think about grace, I think about a hill called Calvary where they pierced him in his side and he had the first C-section in the spiritual realm because as he bled blood and water, the church was birthed out of his side. He caught amazing grace. Yeah. How sweet the sound when I think about what Jesus took for me. It says that saved a wretch like me. Yes. We may be cleaned up right now, but baby, there was some wretched stuff in us. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Some of us, it took us years to get that stuff together. And some of us still fighting. Because every now and then we want to get ratchet. And that's the word they use. Not wretched, ratchet. Watch this. He says, but I once was lost. Which implies that he repented and got found. He says, I was blind. But now I see. Grace allows you to see things in the spirit realm that you cannot see in the natural. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real grace means this. Watch this. Real grace means that you are connected to the word of God. It means that you have a relationship with the logos, with the printed word of God. It means that you spend time in your Bible. It means that if you're going to grow in grace, you got to grow a knowledge of the word of God. You got to have some substance. You just can't have a hoop if you ain't got no word in you, baby. You can't preach to me if you ain't been through nothing. If you ain't never done nothing. You ain't never heard nothing. You ain't never had nothing that was taken from you. I need somebody that can go through this battle with me, it says, I once was lost, but now I'm found, I was blind, but now I see. He says, but it was grace that taught my heart to fear. Here's a man that's in the slave trade, rolling ship from ship.
from shore to shore with slaves piled up in it. And he's in his cabin now, repenting yeah. because of the fear of the Lord that has come upon him. Yeah. Let me tell you something about the fear of God. Yeah. Woo! When the fear of God comes against you, nobody can deliver you. Right. Are you listening? When the fear of God and what has happened to the church, our uh, bishop, they don't fear God no more. We got so many prosperity preachers, and I, look, I'm not broke either, but we got so many folks that's, that's a distorted the word of God that they ain't preaching about heaven and hell. No Y'all not listening to what I'm saying. We hear you. It's time to go back to the rudiments of what true salvation was for. It's time to sanctify yourself because if you're watching the signs of the times, God is soon to come. Are you listening? He says, the fear and grace, and my fear relieved how precious did the grace appear the hour I first believed. He says that I've been through so much now that I, I'm on my knees and I'm repenting and now I'm believing that there's a God. But what y'all didn't know about him was he was a slave too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a princess by the name of Pei and, and she had him as a slave. So he had to be rescued from slavery himself. So he understood both sides of the spectrum. So now he, he remembers the grace that came and rescued him. And he says, through many dangers, yeah. tolls and snares, yeah. I have already come. Yeah. It was grace that brought us safe thus far. Yeah. And grace will lead me home. Yeah. It is this God here that begins to let me know that if you are getting ready to grow in grace, you have to have a connection to the word of God. It is this word of God that's called the Logos that when you begin to have a relationship with the word of God, it transcends into rhema. And when you get the rhema of the word, it begins to come alive on the inside. It begins to live. It is a living organism. It, it begins to grow on the inside of you. And as it starts growing, it turns into dudamus. It begins to give you power over some stuff that used to lay you down, stuff that used to grip your heart and you, you couldn't move had you depressed and oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, had you going through anxiety, now all of a sudden you got some knowledge on the inside of you and every situation that comes your way, you begin to put the word on it, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, baby if you're going to survive in this generation you got to have some word you can't have Mary had a little lamb, you got to know how to pray and go in the spirit for the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? When I'm in a battle, I don't need no cute prayer. I need somebody that'll cry out unto God. Begin to head go on Sunday and in a row shot. Go into the spirit realm and understand that there's something happening in the spirit. I should get in a little shot. That I can't see it happening. But I believe it's happening. Because now faith is the grace. <laughs> now faith is the substance of things hoped for. But you can't have faith unless you got grace. And you can't grow in grace unless you got faith. It is this God here that says when we grow in the knowledge of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. It says to him be glory both now and forever. But for every battle of a warrior, you must understand that we are in a battle. You must understand that we are warriors. I don't know where they came out with this scared church thing. Baby, I'm a fighter. You got to understand, I was a fighter on the streets. So when God brought me in the house of God, he didn't say I had to quit fighting. He just said I had to lose them earthly gloves and just swing in the spirit. Y'all don't hear Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It says for every warrior that's fighting, it says it's confused with noise. Y'all don't hear you got to have a battle cry. You got to have a You got to have a battle cry. When you're going in the battle, somebody.
somebody say, hey, Lord. Let the enemy know you're coming. I used to watch cowboys and Indians. I used to wonder why the Indians was always yelling. They was letting the cowboys know we on the way. He was a war cry. And a war cry means if I die trying. If I die in battle, then it's a good death. If I die on the battlefield for the Lord, it's a good death. If I die doing what God called me to do, it's a good death. But there need to be some noise in the house of the Lord. I can't stand a dead church. I don't want to be in a dead church. Anything dead needs to be buried. You need to lay that dead thing down and understand that I would have faded except to believe the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. It is. His garments are rolled in blood. Yeah. For the Bible says that we become a living sacrifice. Yes, sir. Which means that you got to learn how to take some stuff. Yeah. Come on here. True saints know how to take some stuff. Just because trouble comes don't mean you run from the house. Why is it, Bishop, that every time people get in trouble, the first place they leave out the grave is the church house? You've been rocking with God all this time. Now you could. Come on. Now you in trouble. All of a sudden, you forgot everything that God did for you. Yeah. Preach, man. Watch this. It says, "But for unto us, here it is, grace is born." And is this Jesus now that you have to understand? That he's the one that gives us grace. Yeah. What is grace? It's something that I don't deserve because of the penalty that I serve. It's because of the sin that I'm in. I don't deserve grace. Yeah. But see, grace isn't given because of who you are. It's given because of who he is. Yeah. See, grace comes because of his nature and not yours. Are, are, are you listening to me? It is this grace here that the son was given and the Bible says that the governments shall be upon his shoulders. Now, quit worrying about what the government doing and learn how to pray for the government. If you really want things to go our way, you got to get on your knees. Now, you got to come out of theology and go into neology. Now, there's too many other saints always trying to get deep in the word, now, but they won't get deep on their knees. Now, it's time for the church to start praying again. The church is the strongest entity that's in the world. Why are we acting like some scared rabbits? Bishop, can I preach? preach? Why are we acting like we don't serve a mighty God who's never lost a battle? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Who will destroy worlds and nations for you. Are you listening? Yeah. Hold your peace. God said, I'll fight your back. God don't fight fair when he's fighting for you. He do stuff to him that you can't think about doing. Yeah. Are you listening? And when it hit him, you're the first thing on their mind. It says here, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. Wait a minute. Wonderful, which means he is a wonder, which means we don't understand it all and we're still wondering why we're living like we're living because of the God that we're serving and we're still trying to, why is God choosing me? Why am I the apple of his eye? Why even when I sin and come up short and repent, God takes me right back to the top? The only folks that hold against you is folks that's looking at you. But the Bible says this, if a brother is overtaken in the fault, they which are spiritual, this is my radio voice, restore them with the spirit of meekness. That's the 
Let the strong folks restore the weak folks. Don't throw them away. God's stuff is worth something. He says, now watch it says that he's a counselor. I'm, I'm going to get out of your way in just a minute. It says he, he's a counselor. Sometimes I can't get you on the phone. Sometimes folks look at your number and say, oh, I ain't answering that. Am I the real church? There's certain folks that call your phone and you say, oh, I ain't really, I don't want to deal with that right now. Because you know what you know what's on the other end. But we need a counselor. Someone to come and minister unto us when we're going through. See, you got to understand that being in counsel of God means that you're resting in the word of God. It says, what's this? It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. So you got to understand when God takes you into a secret place, you in the shadows and you in the arms of God almighty. And it doesn't matter what's going on around you, baby, because God's got my back. And if God's got me, yes, it says he's a mighty God, that there's nothing greater than him. He's mighty in his works. He's mighty in his deity. He's the El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi. He's Jehovah, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Jehovah Shalom. He's your peace in the midst of every storm. And he's the only one that said, I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. He says, and he's the everlasting father. God pays his child support. You don't have to take God to court for him to take care of you. God pays his child support. Some of y'all driving cars that you know your credit wasn't good enough for. Some of us living in houses that we don't even know how the bank approved it. It was grace, baby. It was the grace that God put on you. That when they seen the credit report, it went blurry. And instead of saying 475, it said 782. I'm like, I know my credit ain't that good. But grace. Somebody say, but grace. Say amazing grace. It says that then he is the prince of peace. And this is God now that we find it says that when he was in Jerusalem that the child grew and he waxed strong in the spirit and he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. I stopped by to tell the church of the living God that the spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. You must understand that the poor we always have with us but they need the word of God. If they're ever going to come out of a bad situation, you can't run from the poor. You got to run to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There are some folks whose hearts are broken. Do you know that one man can make a woman hate all men? That's true. That's true. Why do you think the spirit of homosexuality is on the rise? Because men been hurt by women and women been hurt by men. But it's a spirit yeah. that can be cast out. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Yeah. It ain't no different than being a liar in a backbite. Yeah. It's a demonic spirit. Yeah. One of the principalities, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness. It is a spirit yeah. that the devil is lullabying the world asleep because he's keeping it in our face. Whether you approve or not, you got to deal with it. Watch this. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach Sweet. deliverance Sweet. to the captive. And recover the sight unto the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Watch this. When you got grace and you're full of the Holy Ghost, it is your job, it is your duty Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. To carry the word. To be instant in season and out of season. When they want to hear you and when they want to stone you. You still got to have the word of God on your lips. You got to understand for God I live and for God I die. Oh my God. It is this God who's able to transform.
transcend and transform us into these human wrecking machines because of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not my power, but it's the power that lives within me. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, that impregnated Mary with a baby. The same power, look like when the saints come together, when Mary went into the house with Elizabeth, the Bible says the baby leaped. Is there any leaping going on in the house of the Lord? When we come together, something needs to leap on the inside. Because I just came in contact with a true believer. There ought to be some leaping. Yeah. Hey, yeah. going on. Yeah. I dare you to leap right now. I, I dare you to leap. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. There's some leaping. Yeah. 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 That's going on, but I reckon that the suffering, huh? many times the children of God, huh? you got to understand that when you are under grace, huh? that you are going to go through some tests, some trials, huh? and some tribulations. Huh? It is this God that told me to tell you huh? that the Lord is my life huh? and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? With the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. In the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me, they heat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell. In the house of the Lord, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the temple. But hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fadeth not, neither is he weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He can Waiting 
on you. Hold on to the word. Hold on to the word. Don't faint in the day of adversity. Don't faint in battle. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. Yeah. And the Lord will give you grace and glory. And God will give you good things. And he will not withhold any good thing from them that walk up right before him. It's the season to live right, saints. It's the season to come out, saints. It's the season to put sin in his place. It's the season for the church to rise up and be counted. It's the season for the church to infect the, the world like the world has infected the church. If they can come in here and act a fool, we could take the Holy Ghost out there and act a fool. Don't be scared of their faces. Don't be scared of what you think they can do. Because when God's got your back, they can't kill you. Are you listening? They can't destroy you. Many times we go through times in our churches where they're up and they're down. But we have certain men and women of God who have stood the test of time. When you learn that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because sometimes good people are going through things and they haven't done anything wrong. It's so that God can get the glory out of what they're going through and you can see God's glory on them as they go through it. His grace is sufficient and it never runs out to the children of God. But he says this in closing, my spirit would not always strive with man. Always remember this, that the same God that saved you is the same God that can condemn you. The same God that brought you out is the same God that watched you when you were in. The same God that put a word in your heart that brought you out yeah. is the same God that can put a word in your mouth to bring somebody else out. Amen. It's time for the church to get busy, y'all. The mask mandate has just been removed, but most of us are still wearing them in certain places. But as the church reconvene, and as the body of Christ reconnect, those of you that know the word got to get busy. Don't let Jesus come back and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I knew you not. That the harvest was right but the laborers were few. I needed you. Yeah. Because Bishop, there's certain folks we can't reach That's true. that somebody else in the congregation can. You gotta understand this, that the same God that built the heaven is the same God that built the hell. Amen. The Bible says hell is enlarging itself daily. Yeah. Because the way to destruction is wrong, but salvation road is real skinny. And when we find it, you have to walk that road with diligence and understand that only what you do for Christ will last. Somebody clap your hands all over the building and give the Lord some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now, lift your hands all over this place. Amen. Give vent to the Spirit of God. Every time a mighty word is delivered like that, there's an anointing to heal and there's an anointing to deliver. And all you have to do is tap in to the anointing that God has put here. Just for a few moments, I'm going to end the stream, but we want to do a few things and finish, but we don't want to break the spirit. Yeah. Just for a moment, you in church, close your eyes.
The reason we tell you to close your eyes so that you don't see anything that distracts you yes. while you're trying to connect with God. And then I want you to lift your hands because the Bible says lift the holy hands yes. without wrath and without doubt. Without wrath means that you got to lose an attitude. Yes. You can't lift your hands with an attitude. Uh, and you can't doubt the word of God. The Bible says if you believe, yes. then you shall have the thing that you pray for. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the anointing of this word. We thank you for the vessel that you use to deliver this word. We thank you for the people of God who are now surrendered to you with their hands lifted up to receive a blessing from the hand of the Lord. Father, now send the rain, send the time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord into our midst. Now I want you to open your mouth and I want you to worship God out of your mouth. Would you just come open your mouth? Open your mouth, be public with your worship. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and praise him. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, higher, 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 deeper, higher, deeper, higher, deeper, higher, deeper, deeper into the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Glory to God. Come on now, clap your hands. Right there, we bless the Lord. Amen. How many know the Lord is good? Amen. How many know the Lord is good?